We will now talk about the concept of duration. Duration is the main tool for measuring sensitivity of price of a financial instrument to interest rate. And I said interest rate meaning one interest rate only because later on when we study this a little bit more we'll talk about um, different interest rates for different maturities of uh, bonds or cash flows but we now assume it's one interest rate all the time. This is commonly called a flat yield curve assumption. Also, because that means the changes, and we're studying sensitivity to changes in interest rate. Since changes are changes to that one interest rate for all maturities, is also uh, commonly called a parallel shift assumption in the yield curve, what we're doing here when we study changes in interest rates. So let's assume that we have P of I denoting the price of a financial instrument, some financial asset, typically a bond because bonds are most sensitive, most directly sensitive to interest rates. So we write a P of I uh, for the price as a function of interest rate. And we can also consider the same way the price to be a function of the force of interest, P of delta. Uh, note that 1 plus i is e to the delta, and we will use that relationship quite a lot. Then duration of this security of this financial asset is defined as minus the derivative of the price with respect to the interest rate times 1 over the price. So it's a derivative taken with a minus sign and then divided by the price. Note that for a typical bond, higher interest rate results in a lower price because we're discounting at a higher interest rate future cash flows that the bond produces. So lower price with higher interest rate for a typical bond so that this derivative of the price with respect to the interest rate is typically negative and that minus in front is really put there to make the whole thing positive. Note also that that minus the derivative of the price divided by the price, that's the same as minus the derivative of the natural logarithm of the price. And that's in calculus, this derivative of the natural logarithm is called logarithmic derivative. So we're taking minus the logarithmic derivative of the mm, price with respect to the interest rate. So mathematically, duration is the opposite of the logarithmic derivative of the price of a security with respect to the interest rate. But of course, we can approximate the derivative with a difference quotient. And if we do that, then we get this approximation. Uh, the derivative is approximately equal to the price after a slight decrease in the interest rate minus the current price and the whole thing divided by the price times the change in interest rate, that slight decline in interest rate that we're considering. Or uh, the change in price divided by the price, which is like the performance, percentage performance of the security as a result of this change in interest rate, divided by the change in interest rate. Now remember the interest rate is expressed per period of time typically annual. So the top thing is a percentage and the bottom thing is a percentage per year. And you can, in a sense, think about this as um, units of, of the top being percentage, the bottom being percentage per year. So if you divide this, it will tell you that the natural physical unit for duration is the unit of time. And if the interest rate is annual, then um, duration is expressed in years. Also, this means that duration gives us the ratio of the percentage gain in the value of a security per unit of interest rate decrease. So, for example, if you have a security that has a duration of five, and it's five years, so five, and the interest rate goes from, let's say, 3% to 2%, declines by 1%. Then this delta i is 1%, and duration is 5. Then p of i minus delta i 
minus p of i divided by p of i has to be equal to 5 percent. Duration of 5 means that if rates, if the interest rate declines by 1 percent, you have a gain in the value of the security of 5, the duration, times 1 percent change, and that's 5 percent. Note also that since the gain or loss in the value of the security is a percentage, delta i is percent per year, then duration is in years, which I had mentioned to you. The opposite of the derivative of the price with respect to the interest rate which we've used here is also termed the dollar duration of a security, although I'll use the, the name monetary security, I don't want to tie it to a specific currency and used in the US or Canada, so I will call it monetary duration, but you will hear that expression dollar duration quite a lot from investment professionals. You could ask why we're using the interest rate and not the force of interest, and there's nothing wrong with the question. We in fact use both for two slightly related concepts. Uh, of course we know that 1 plus i is e to the delta, that implies that d of i uh, of a d of um, d i of a d delta is e to the delta, right? Because i is equal to e to the delta minus one, and then you take the derivative, you get d to the delta, and of course that's equal to one plus i, and d delta divided by d i is the reciprocal of that by the chain uh, by the chain rule, effectively. Well, you sort of know that the derivative of the inverse function is the reciprocal of the original derivative, or you should know that from calculus. So that's one over one plus i, or v, or e to the minus delta. And there is a measure of sensitivity with respect to the force of interest, which is called the Macaulay duration which is defined as minus the derivative of the price with respect to delta times one over the price, and it must be equal to one plus i times regular duration, or regular duration is one over one plus i times the Macaulay duration. When you talk to investment people, they will just call um, an expression like this, they'll, they'll call the duration that you get this way, modified duration, Sometimes they call it effective duration, um, because it's uh, in general refers also to uh, securities that uh, have cash flows dependent on interest rates. And on your exam, you need to be very careful to pay attention to the wording of the problem and make certain what, um, uh, that you know whether the problem asks about Macaulay duration or duration. And again, the expression modified duration definitely refers to duration. Now assume that we actually have a security for which we exactly know what its cash flows are going to be. Let's say they are a sub t at time t in the future, where there's a collection of times in the future, times t, when those cash flows are positive. And we assume that the cash flows are discrete, not continuous, it's possible to continue uh, to, to consider securities with continuous cash flows, but only on the exam. In real life, they don't exist. Only one interest rate is assumed, and um, we assume that a sub t, the, the cash flow payment at time t, does not depend on the interest rate. That's commonly uh, called deterministic cash flow, because they're determined, uh, then they don't depend on interest rate. And then the present value of the security and its price is the sum of the present values under interest rate i of those individual payments. And if we take the derivative of that with respect to i and put a minus sign in front of it, we get this expression that you see here, which is 1 over 1 plus i times uh, sum uh, over all t's for which we have positive cash flows of t times present value of uh, a of t. And then the duration of the security is, well, 1 over the price times what we just calculated, and that turns out to be 1 over 1 plus i times the sum of t times present value of a t divided by p of i, but p of i is the price as a function of i, and that price 
um, is equal to the sum of all, over all t's of those present values of a sub t. So this expression there, present value of a, a sub t divided by the price, if you add them all up, if you add up the present values of a sub t, you get the price. So if you add up these ratios, you must get 1. If we now introduce um, weights defined as w sub t equal to present value of a sub t divided by the total price, as I mentioned, those add up to 1, then duration turns out to be a weighted average time to maturity modified by 1 uh, over 1 plus i, so it's equal to 1 over 1 plus i times a sum of wt times t. And t is the time of payment, or we'd call it time of maturity. This is the reason why um, in investments they call duration very often in this written in this form modified duration, because it's modified by this factor one over one plus i. Now if the cash flows are dependent on interest rates, you can't do this calculation. In that case, duration calculated for the securities where cash flows are dependent on interest rates such as for example, mortgages, which can be paid off early, and they are paid off early typically when interest rates are low, but not paid off early when interest rates are higher. Mm, and then duration for such security calculation of duration results in what is commonly called effective duration. But in all cases, duration is the opposite of a logarithmic derivative with respect to the interest rate. That weighted average time to maturity concept is actually the original idea of duration. In 1938, Macaulay defined for security with deterministic cash flows with price P, it's what we call Macaulay duration as the weighted average time to maturity. So the sum of T times present value of A sub T divided by the price, and of course this present value of A sub T divided by the price, is the weight that we introduced before. And we can see easily that for a, a security with deterministic cash flows, its price is the sum of present values of a sub t expressed with respect to the present value calculation that is done with the force of interest here. Then the Macaulay duration, as we defined it earlier, is actually the weighted average time to maturity. And if we reintroduce these weights, w sub t, and introduce a discrete probability distribution with, um, it's artificially introduced, but it's a useful tool, where we say that probability that t is equal to little t is w sub little t, then the Macaulay duration is actually the expected value of this probability distribution. So we can think of the time t to payment as a random variable described by the distribution, and the expected time of it is the Macaulay duration. If we consider duration or Macaulay duration of any security, whose price treat as a function of interest rate is written as P, and suppose that we have P, P1, and P2 are prices of securities expressed as functions of interest rate such that the price of P, P is the sum of two prices for any interest rate or any delta, Although that's the case any time the cash flows of P are the sum of cash flows of P1 and P2. In other words, when you add the payments of two securities and you get a third security, then the price is also added because the price is a, um, a linear operator. Then it actually follows directly from the definition of duration of Macaulay duration that either duration or Macaulay duration is the weighted average of durations or Macaulay durations respectively of the individual pieces. This means that if you have a set of cash flows, whatever security is, any security is a set of cash flows, you can figure out the duration of each individual payment and then figure out the duration of the overall thing as a weighted average duration of individual payments where the weights are proportional to market values of the individual payments. But individual payments are easy to deal with because for a single payment at time t uh, in the future, Macaulay duration is t and duration is t divided by 1 plus i. And duration of portfolio can be calculated as a weighted average of durations of individual p payments 
for securities whose cash flows do not depend on interest rates, uh, calculation of duration is actually quite easy, directly following from this idea. Let's look at, at an example of using that uh, formula for Macaulay duration, uh, that approach of calculating it as the weighted average time until payment. So um, consider security, which is an annuity immediate paid with certainty for n years, m times a year with each payment equal to 1 over m. Okay. Well, we know the price of a security is written as a angle n upper m, but we're going to prove here that its Macaulay duration is 1 over d upper m minus n divided by 1 plus i to the n minus 1. And actually this is a really handy formula to memorize, so please memorize it for the test. All cash flows here are 1 over m. They come in times 1 over m, 2 over m through n m minus 1 over m, and then the last one at time n. And the price of a security is a angle n upper m, and therefore its Macaulay duration is, well, the weighted average time. Um, the present value of each payment is 1 over m times uh, v to the k over m. If we divide that by 1 over a angle n upper m, that's the weight. And the time of the payment is k over m, from k equal 1 to n times m. But the sum of these um, payments of this form, k time, k divided by m squared, this present value factor, that's actually how we defined i upper m a angle n upper m. So it's really, this is really i upper m a angle n upper m divided by a angle n upper m. We plug in the formula for the increasing annuity. And that formula includes a double dot angle n upper m. So we plug in the formula for this guy. Notice that i upper m from the top and the bottom cancels. And then um, the first term from the numerator divided by the denominator gives us 1 over the upper m, and the second one gives us minus n over 1 plus i to the n minus 1. And that is uh, the, uh, the proof of this formula that you may really come, you may really find handy when you're taking a test. Also, if <clears throat> the security is a risk-free bond with principal value of one dollar, maturing n years from now, paying an equal coupon of i upper m over m m times a year at the end of e uh, each mth of the year, with i upper m being the value of the nominal annual interest rate compounded m times a year at the time the bond issue, so that that's the market rate. So that um, we assume that the um, bond is issued at par then its price, if it covers is 1, because we assume that it's issued at par, um, and um, its Macaulay duration, calculated here as the weighted average time to maturity again, well, the, the price at the bottom is 1, and the top just lists all the uh, cash flow payments, each multiplied by a present value factor and the time when it's paid. And this whole thing ends up being equal to i upper m times increasing monthly annuity for n years, increasing m times a year, and monthly annuity plus nv to the nth. And then if you multiply the formula for the increasing annuity by this i upper m that we have in front of it, then we end up with a double dot angle n upper, upper m minus nv to the nth plus nv to the nth. So the answer is that this is a double dot angle n uh, upper M, that is a very handy formula. It's a formula for the duration of the bond that turns out to be simply a present value of um, monthly um, annuity over N years, where N is the term of the bond, as long as the bond is trading at par. Very, very handy formula. One important comment is that investment professionals who don't deal with liabilities, when they think about duration, they think about it not in the context of comparing duration of assets and liabilities, which we will do soon, but rather the way that is described in this picture, but to understand this we need to 
think carefully about the picture. Imagine that you're looking at a bond that is being issued at par because the coupon of the bond is the same as the interest rate in the market and uh, it is at time zero, at the beginning of the time axis here. And then we're showing here uh, on the time axis, you see the point where it says duration, and then beyond that, you can see where the line indicated with uh, the words bond principal, it ends, that's the maturity of the bond. And in fact, all of the curves end at that time too. That's the time when the bond matures. And we assume that the bond is issued at par. The bond principal amount is also the price because it's being issued at par. Now imagine that you buy it at par, at issue, and you hold it until maturity. Then at maturity you'll have the bond principal, it will be paid back to you, but you'll also have all the coupons that the bond paid accumulated with interest and um, that's a very important consideration that if you look at the middle of the three curves going up um, if rates are unchanged I'll need to correct the description of the picture here because it doesn't clearly say rates unchanged because we changed the size of the font so I apologize for a moment I'll correct this so here we have it, now it says principal and interest if rates unchanged, that's the middle curve. It's in the middle, at the beginning and at the end. The three curves cross each other at one point, and the time indicated as duration, we'll get back to this in just a moment. Now imagine that instead of uh, this bond, instead of staying at the price equal to par so that the bond principal amount is the, the price between now and maturity and immediately after you purchase the bond rates went up a bit that means the price of the bond is going to decline that's the curve that is the bottom curve at the beginning of the graph it indicates the price of the bond, but now the bond starts out after you bought it immediately. Imagine that the rates went up, the price dropped. You're very unhappy, but you now in the world in which interest rate is higher and you receive the same bond principal at maturity and the same coupons. But in this new world with higher interest rate, the coupons are reinvested at a higher interest rate. That actually means that if the rates go up right after you purchase the bond, while you have a decline in the price of the bond at first, eventually you end up with more money because you will get exactly the same bond principal at maturity and you will get more money from coupons now being reinvested at a higher interest rate. On the other hand, if rates go down immediately after you purchase the bond, the price of the bond will increase. But you're now reinvesting coupons at a lower interest rate, which means that at maturity you'll end up with less money because you get the same principal and coupons, but coupons are reinvested at a lower rate. So the three curves that you see here show you the a value of the principal and interest as it changes over time from the bond issue to maturity and the bottom one describes a situation when the rates went up slightly after the bond was issued. At first you have lower amount but eventually you end up with more money at the end. The middle one is unchanged rates and the top one is rates going down at the beginning when you right after you purchase the bond, but then you end up with less money at maturity. And the interesting thing is that the three curves cross each other exactly at the point in time which corresponds to the duration of the bond, and at that time the value of your investment will be the same regardless of what happened to interest rates. That's the crucial idea behind duration. Duration is created to be able to in some way control what happens to the value of your portfolio 
when interest rates change. And this tells you that if you hold your bond for the period of time equal to the duration of the bond, then for small changes in interest rates, you'll approximately end up with the same amount of money no matter what happens to the interest rates between um, now and that time. Investment people say that this means that you immunize your rate of return. And of course, in a sense they mean that you guarantee it that way. Um, and that rate is the yield rate at which you purchase the bond. But you must hold the bond only till duration of the bond, not till maturity, but till duration of the bond. In practice, securities have a very complex relationship of cash flows to interest rates, and you can't always write a direct functional relationship between the cash flows and interest rate. For example, when the, the amount of the payment depends on the level of interest rate, which is the case for uh, bonds that can be called and paid off early, or for mortgages that can be paid off early, but also the case for things that default, where suddenly you don't get the cash flows you were promised. For securities with um, what we say, we describe them as securities with embedded options, and those include option to repay a loan, or prepay a home mortgage, or call a bond, and also the option to default on the bond. Um, duration is usually not calculated directly, but estimated from how the price of a bond changes. If we write a price as a function of interest rate, and use the Taylor series expansion um, of the price as a function of interest rates, as you can see here, if you ignore the nonlinear terms, you get uh, the first formula if you consider the price after an uh, increase in the interest rate by delta i, and the second if you consider the price after decrease of interest rate by delta i. If you average the two formulas, those two formulas actually are already solved for what we define duration to be, and from the Taylor series expansion for the two cases, and then we average the two, and we get the formula for the approximation of duration as the price after the rate goes down a bit, minus the price after the rate goes up a bit, divided by two times the current price times delta i, the small change in interest rate. This is approximation is commonly called option adjusted duration or effective duration. And here is um, an exercise where we use this. Suppose that you are an investment actuary for the Honorable Life Insurance Company. Your company has just purchased a callable bond, which at issue had a maturity of 15 years and five years of call protection. It can't be called the first five years. But you did not buy this bond at issue, but in the secondary market, some time after its issue, you paid a price of 101.42 per 100 of principal. You are given the following information. If interest rate decreases by 10 basis points, and the basis point is defined as 0.01%, then the price is 101.58. If interest rate increases by 10 basis point, points, then the price is 101.20. You're also given that the force of interest equals 4% right now. Calculate the approximate value of the Macaulay duration of the bond. Five choices. Well, we switch first from the force of interest, 4%, to interest rate. 1 plus i is equal to e to the delta, so that i is e to the delta minus 1, or e to the 0 0.04 minus 1, that's approximately 4.0811%. And then the approximation of the effective duration formula gives us, uh, duration is approximately price after a slight decline in interest rate. The amount of the decline is 10 basis points, so 10 times 0.01%, that's 1 tenth of 1%. Um, and the price is 101.58, price after the same increase in interest rate, 101.20 divided by 2 times the current price, 101.42 times point, 10 basis points, which is 0 0.001 or 0.1%. 
from all this you get 1.8734 as the approximation of duration and the Marconi duration is the, the regular duration times 1 plus i and that's how we get the answer almost exactly 1.95 Okay, here is another exercise where we use the concepts we just learned. You are an investor purchasing a following bond. It's eight year, it has eight year maturity, 4% coupon rate, coupons paid semi-annually, which is, as I told you, standard in the US. Price to yield 4% per year, compounded semi-annually. And its power value equal to redemption value is 1000. And the price is 1000, so it's selling at par. The bond is non-callable and you are given its Macaulay duration with extreme precision here uh, with many digits after a decimal point. One day after the purchase of the bond interest rate increases to 6% nominal annual rate compounded semi-annually and remains at this level until bond maturity. You suffer a capital loss on the bond and really don't like it. Assume bond coupons can be reinvested at 6% nominal annual rate compounded semi-annually because that's the current rate in the market um, you decide to sell the bond immediately after the first coupon payment after which you will receive at least the same yield as the original yield planned when you purchase the bond. When will you sell the bond? This exercise illustrates the idea in the graph that I was showing you about how investment professionals think about duration. The time of sale should be the original duration of the bond. At duration at the time of purchase of the bond. The Macaulay duration of purchase was given, and that's this number with extreme precision, and duration, or modified duration, is that divided by 1 plus the interest rate. But we're not given the interest rate, we're given um, i upper 2, which is 4%. But 1 plus i is equal to 1 I plus i upper 2 over 2 squared, so we plug that in, and from this we get approximately 6.6557. This means that if you wait exactly this length of time, you will get the same rate as a uh, nominal annual yield of 4% compounded semi-annually, and that's almost exactly 4.04 .04 annual effective. Um, because you must sell immediately after a payment of a coupon, you'll have to wait until the 14th coupon, because the 13th one happens at time 6.5, right? The 12th coupon is at time 6, 13th at 6.5, 14th at um, seven at time seven, and you're supposed to wait until next coupon from time six point six five five seven, and that's actually the entire solution. Although I want to illustrate to you what the values of uh, the, the rates of return you get under certain circumstances, what the value of the bond is, and so on. So, just as a comment, note that after the fourteenth coupon payment, you'll have the following market value of the bond times seven years. It's an eight-year bond, so there will be two more coupons, and the present value of the redemption is value is 1,000 divided by 1.03 squared. Remember, it's 3% per half a year, the current yield, and that ends up being 980.87, so the bond will be still trading below par. In addition to that, the investor will have accumulated 14 coupons of 20 at 3% per half a year. They're all reinvested, we assume, at that rate. And the value of that is accumulated value of 20 paid in this interest rate environment where you get 3% per half a year. Um, and it's an accumulated value of annuity of 14 coupons of 20 at 3% ends up being 341.73. And so your total amount that you have is the value of the bond plus the accumulated value of a coupon ends up being 1322.60. You invested a thousand at the beginning, you end up with this much after seven years. This, the interest rate that you earn is a solution of this equation, 1000 times 1 plus r to the seventh equals 1322.60 that we just obtained. And from this r is approximately 4.08%, which is actually slightly over the initial effective annual yield of 4.04%. By the way, after the 13th coupon, the market value of the bond will be the present value of the remaining three coupons plus the remaining maturity payment of 1,000. That ends up being 971.71. The accumulated value of the past coupons is then accumulated value of 13 coupons, 312.36 each, uh, 
each paid every half a year, 13 half a year periods, 3% per half a year interest rate. That's what this says. And the total value is 1284.07. This actually means well, that you invested a thousand. You get this much after 13 periods. If you solve for the interest rate per half a year period, you get 1.94% and annual effective yield of 3.92. And that's less than 4.04 that you initially had. In this next exercise, you are managing a bond portfolio of a million dollars. You decide that the Macaulay duration of your portfolio should be exactly 10. You have only two securities to choose from for your investments. A zero coupon bond of maturity five years and a continuous perpetuity paying at the rate of a dollar per year. Current force of interest is 5%. How much will you invest in each of these securities in order to have the desired Macaulay duration? So let's solve this problem. First, we know that the Macaulay duration of a zero coupon bond will be exactly five years because it's a five year zero coupon bond. The perpetuity is worth one over delta, a continuous perpetuity of, uh, that pays one per year is worth one over delta if the force of interest is delta. And so its derivative with respect to delta equals, well, minus one over delta squared. And so its Macaulay duration is minus minus 1 over delta squared divided by 1 over delta, which is, ends up being 1 over delta. At the given force of interest of 5%, this means its Macaulay duration is 20. And if you invest a fraction of your portfolio W in the zero coupon bond and 1 minus W in the perpetuity, the Macaulay duration of the entire portfolio will be W times 5 plus 1 minus W times 20. So it's, and it's supposed to be 10. Well, that solves it's a simple linear equation. The solution is W equals two-thirds. That means you should in invest two-thirds of your portfolio in terms of the value in the five years of coupon bond. So about $666,666.67. And, um, and the rest, $333,333.33. Per, uh, in the perpetuity that we have here. And that's the end of this section. I hope that this was enjoyable. Uh, we will proceed with some more complicated things related to interest rate security, uh, sensitivity.